Hi, guys. We love each other, and we know what our creed is. And me and my dad work together and do projects together. Our family, all the little family, we do everything we can, and we do our creed like this. I'm a lighter, I'm a leader, I'm a winner, I'm strong because we're strong and nothing can stop us. Hey, welcome back team. This is the Life Balance Series and this is the second video in a total of six that will be released this month aimed at helping us reach our full potential. These six elements that we're discussing are extremely important to me and I think they'll be important to you too because I think they must remain balanced in order for us to reach our maximum potential. It also helps us feel fulfilled, happier, and it allow, they allow us to contribute uh, to the success of other people and not only ourselves. All right, team. Welcome back to the Life Balance Series. Uh, I really appreciate you joining me. Uh, I, I really think that this work is important, and I'm going to continue to grind it out until, um, until I reach a multitude of people. Uh, because, once again, this podcast is all about uh, helping others reach their full potential as I continue to reach my own. Life's a journey. Uh, we're all continuing to grow and get better. And this particular podcast today is going to be about family in the uh, second of the six that we're going to post this month. And family to me is everything. It's the cornerstone of my existence. And I really think a lot of us take our family for granted. You know, we get consumed in work. We get consumed in the day-to-day uh, -day taskers that we have for ourselves. And sometimes we get consumed so much with our own goals and aspirations that we forget about those that are so important to us. Those that love us, those that support us, those that have been there from day one, and they're probably not going anywhere. Your home and your family are your nest. They should be the center of your life. The home is the hub in which all your daily experiences they start. It starts in the home. Both as children and adults, in our home and amongst our family, it's where we should feel the most comfortable. This element really does determine how we make our life decisions. They shape our attitudes, our self-awareness, and our self-esteem. A happy and a healthy home life is the most vital ingredient in the pursuit for a life of contribution and meaning. So again, during this series, I'm gonna invite you into my home to share some intimate details on how I believe that I keep my family balanced and, and how we keep ourselves on track and hold each other accountable. And I hope you enjoy. Like I said, you know, authenticity, transparency, I believe is the key to trust. And uh, for you to understand that I know what I'm talking about, I have to show you that I'm living when I'm speaking. So I hope you enjoy the podcast and we're going to continue to go into family, the cornerstone of my existence and probably yours, if you're really honest with yourself. Our homes and our family is where our story begins. Home is the starting place of what should be our love, hopes and dreams. Some people grow up with love and and happiness and others grow up in poverty and despair. Well, wherever you grow up, wherever you came from, it is now your responsibility to ensure that your family has a loving home and your home is full of love, joy, and happiness. Home's not a place, it's a feeling. What I love most about my home is who I share it with. There's nothing more important in a good, safe, and secure home. It don't take long, and you don't have to look far in the light of household, no matter what room you're in, to realize it's a home full of happiness, love, and joy. And yeah, like any other family, we have our problems and, and our issues, but we move and get past them, and we just make sure that we, un, we all, each and, under, and every one of us, understand that love is the cornerstone of you know, what we're about. And each one of us know, particularly my wife and I, that nothing comes before us. You know, I'm not going to put anything above her. She's not going to put anything above me. And together with that love and that bond, 
we're going to take care of our kids and ensure they grow up in a loving, safe environment where they can, you know, have the space to reach their maximum potential. Now, you hear me say that a lot, and I use that word potential. Uh, and I don't use it in any other way but to kind of highlight what our aim is. Our aim is to continue to grow. And that's what it's really about for our families. Uh, just like any other organization we're a part of, whether you're a part of a military organization, a, a corporate 500 company, a business, a sports team, each and every one of you uh, should be aimed at reaching your full potential. So potential to me is something that it's a continuously strive. I, I don't think we ever reach it until the day we leave this earth. Uh, I think we, it, it's, it's a goal that, that's continuous. It's a continuous journey of, of, of progress. So when I say, you know, I'm trying to help people reach their full potential while, while I'm reaching my own, I'm, I'm trying to invite you on a life journey uh, that we all can embark upon to better ourselves and to grow together. So really, uh, in my opinion, there are three elements to a balanced family life to increase your happiness in your home. And there's multiple elements, you know, I, I'll, I'll be naive just to think that there's three, but there's three that works for me that I really deliberately try to get after, you know, every day, every week, every month, every year to help improve my family's quality of life and to improve our interpersonal relationships. The first one is shared values. The next one is home atmospherics. And I'll tell you what I mean by that in a moment. And then finally, routines, rituals, and traditions are extremely important. So let's go ahead and take a minute to talk about shared values. Now, when a family shares principles and values, we all grow together. The home becomes the foundation for the family's shared sense of purpose while providing a springboard for each of us or each member of your family to pursue their own goals. This fosters the type of environment where each family member feels a sense of importance. You know, we can talk to each other about things and we're not scared to share what's on our mind. Realistically, the ultimate beauty of this whole concept of shared values in your home is the emotional and spiritual growth that it promotes in each individual. In my home, I, I try to promote uh, Christ. You know, I, you know, it's my, me personal, my personal preference. I'm not trying to push it out on you, but I try to live like Christ and try to push my children to, to get to know uh, who he was and, and, and live those shared values of love and commitment to helping a, another person reach their um, purpose in life. And we have a creed. You know, our creed is I'm a lytle, I'm a leader, I'm a winner, I'm strong. And my daughters know it, my son knows it, my wife knows it, and that's what we try to live out. I love my daddy and he's the best because he's helped me and I love him so much because he is brave. Then, then we do the creed. I'm a ladder, I'm a leader, I'm a winner, I'm strong. And then we love each other. Values are important because they hold us together. They give us a shared vision of what it's like to be a family. And whatever your values are, they don't have to be the same as mine, you know, or, or my family's, but whatever your values are, just make sure that you and your family are all on the same sheet of music. Now, if you're a single parent, it's hard. I know you gotta work and you can't watch your kids all the time, you know, but you gotta get with them and you gotta make the time that you have with them count, you know. Um, and, you know, if you're married, the values of your family doesn't start with the husband being the head of the household and telling everybody what to do. It starts with the wife, the husband, the husband, the wife, the spouses, whether you're same sex marriage or whatever the case may be. It starts with all of you, the two adults in the house, being on the same shit of music. What are your values? What's important to your family? What do you want to see your kids go out in the world and do? And finally, you know, really, when it comes to values and principles, what do you want your kids to be doing? And how do you want them to be behaving? And how do you want them to be treating other people? 
when you're not around. You know, it's been said many times before, but no two families are exactly alike. Your relatives may be loud and crazy, small and introspective, totally conventional or completely unorthodox, but your family is yours. And no matter what, your family makes up a huge part of who you are. You should be celebrating them. You should have an atmosphere of love and kindness. Discipline too, you know, especially when it comes to kids. I I particularly find that uh, necessary with my son. You know, I got to show him, you know, how to be a man and and how to how to uh, take ownership of his life. You know, I'm teaching him the difference between adulthood and adolescence is accountability. Owning yours. So the atmospherics in the home is gentle, kind, loving, and we express that towards each other. But we also live a strict regime of, uh, of, of routine. So, you know, when my wife comes home from work and smiles and she finds a a bouquet of flowers on the table that my kids are sitting at doing their homework and the smile on her face and uh, she immediately goes from you know almost defeat uh, from the the, the, uh, challenges of the day to joy and, and, and happiness that sets the tone that says something to my kids about actor acts and gestures of kindness when my son comes home and had a rough day at school or he doesn't understand homework, you know, I make him sit down and do it and I, you know, have him ask me questions. And we figure it out together. And we're accomplishing something together. And we're learning something together. Because believe me, I wasn't very good at math myself. So helping my son with the sixth grade math is, uh, can be challenging at times. But when I sit down with him and I help him out with his math homework and we develop that bond, that sets a tone. It sets an atmosphere of mutual respect and love for each other. On Saturday or Sunday morning before church, when I come down and wake up early in the morning and I, and I make my daughter's breakfast and, uh, and, and I you know, put it on a nice little tray, maybe snip a flower out of the garden and put it on the tray and I take it upstairs to him. And I wake them up with breakfast in bed. It shows them I love them. It shows them I respect them. It shows them that I'm willing to go the extra mile to make them happy. The atmospherics in your home are extremely important. And it starts with you. It starts with me. We set the tone. It doesn't matter that your wife comes home angry or frustrated or irritated. It doesn't matter that you're having a bad day. It doesn't matter that your kids are frustrated with with ballet or soccer or basketball or football or or school. What matters is how you respond. What tone are you setting for them? How are you showing them how to deal with it? And what's your thermostat like in your home? Atmospherics. You know, you really have to take a look at them and see what tone we're setting in the house. The final element, really not the least, and none of these are any, in any real particular order, but rituals, routines, and traditions. As we go through life, we come up with a lot of them. You know, some of us grew up having Christmas on Christmas morning, you know, Thanksgiving and those kind of things. But I'm talking about your daily routine um, and, and those yearly routines. When we wake up every morning, you know, I have my own personal time in the morning. You know, I get, usually get up around 4.50 and I start my day. And then I wake the kids up. I wake my son up around 5.30. He gets up earlier than the, the girls uh, because I think he should. I'm teaching him how to rise early. Uh, but we have this routine, our daily routine, and it's very consistent. You know, we eat breakfast together. You know, everybody goes to school or work. We come home. We eat dinner together. We do homework together, things of that nature. We spend time together. And uh, that's our daily routine, and it's consistent. So the kids know what to expect. The wife knows what to expect. And you can say, oh, man, this can, this is kind of boring. It's in a rut. No, it's just consistency. We get up and we do the same things over and over, you know, um, and, you know, we go to church every Sunday, and, and we spend time together enjoying each other's time as a family. So family time, we have that a lot. Uh, But it doesn't mean every time we have family time or we're going to watch a movie, we watch the same movie. No, we mix it up and we do different things. But that's on the schedule. That's going to happen. We are going to spend time together as a family multiple times throughout the day. And it's not all happy-go-lucky. Sometimes it's homework. Sometimes it's 
me and the wife consolidating and paying uh, whatever bills and looking at our finances and budget. So it's not all, you know, a time where everything's, you know, we're having a great time. We Sometimes it, we're not. Uh, we're doing, we're handling business, but we're still doing it as a family. And that's what I'm saying. That when we do things together, we pray together, uh, we pay bills together, we do homework together. We get used to doing things together as a team. And that's what it's all about. It's about the team. And what I'll find, what I really find remarkable with my kids is they start really thinking about each other first. And that translate translate over to putting friends first and, and other people before themselves. Uh, but we can get in that to a later, in a later podcast uh, when we talk about uh, selfless service. But I want to talk about setting a routine and some traditions in your family. And, and it really doesn't take much. It starts with a schedule and it starts with sticking to it. Spend time with them, enjoy time with them, but make it consistent. They get up the same time, they go to bed at the same time. You go, you wake up at the same time, you go to bed at the same time. We don't stick to a schedule, we don't have the energy to continue to move, and then we just kind of go through life like an accident. When you have a schedule, you know what the breaks are in that schedule, so you know how to, when to accelerate, accelerate your efforts and when to pull back just a little bit. You know, if I, if I know that, uh, you know, I'm about to spend two or three hours with my family in the next 45 minutes and I can go hard, whether I'm out there exercising and get, or, or I'm doing something at work, it gives me something to look forward to. So don't negate or underestimate the um, advantages of having rituals as a family, your daily routines, and those yearly, monthly, and family traditions that we love and share. I look across the walls and in my house and I look across them with pride. I'm very happy and very proud of my family, regardless of my humble beginnings, regardless of where I came from. Uh, even in some horrific times growing up, there were still elements of love. There were still aunts, uncles, you know, grandparents, um, friends of the family that still looked out for us, even during some trying times. You know, both my parents had their own demons they were fighting. You know, and I'm fighting my own demons, and I'm sure my wife has hers. But we owe it to the next generation and our kids to make sure that they feel that love, to make sure they feel wanted, and to make sure they have the opportunity to succeed. It takes work. It takes commitment. It takes time, energy, most of all, it takes love. Family life is hard life. You know, these are deliberate actions. Everything doesn't fall into play and everything, everybody's just happy-go-lucky and, and things just work out for everybody's benefit. This takes time and effort. It's strategic. You know, human beings, I think, uh, a lot of times are just inadvertently selfish. They don't mean to be, or we don't mean to be saying they like we're not all human we don't mean to be but sometimes we put our needs before those uh those other people and sometimes those other people are the ones who depend on us the most please remember to subscribe to the channel and share it with somebody that can use it and always remember your greatness is yet to be achieved, and I'll see you at the pinnacle.